Okay, so we're gonna just, we're gonna go back in time here a little bit. We open this up and I look into the path shape. So at some point, Valona, did you trace this with something? The bowling pin? Yes. I was starting to, then we ran out of time in class, so I stopped. Okay. You traced it with the pen okay. tool. Okay. So if I grab the path selection tool or the direct select, I can make this active. I can move the anchor points around. I can grab my little handle. Okay. I can do whatever I need to do. I can convert my anchor point. You want to make it a little smoother. It's not a bad bowling pin. With this selected, it's, I'm sorry, not selected, with it active. I'm sorry, did I finish tracing it? You did. Okay. I just figured you were crazy and went, kept moving. Um, yeah. With this active, right, it's not a selection, it's an active path. What I can do is instead of saving it as just a path, I'm going to do something even simpler and go to Edit, Define, Custom Shape. There it is. And I'm going to call it bowling pin. Okay. Now, I'm also, because I don't know if I'm going to need to fill that later or I don't want to select this bowling pin ever again, I'm also going to double click on it in the paths and save it as bowling pin tap path. And at any time, I can always go back and make a selection out of that. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. I'm going to go back to my layers, which I'm not sure uh, where they went. By the way, just a little side note, I'm trying to go like the Shepherd Fairy up to with all of this. You know, three or four colors max, yellow, red, dark red. Well, since he was influenced by the Russians. Looks like Yeah, were. absolutely. All right, so now I have a shape layer. It does not. It does not have a fill. No, it doesn't have the stripes on the top or anything. No, but that's that's up to you. We could do that, but I just want to do like one step at a time. Yeah. Um. Now, if I grab my custom my vector uh, vector tool, my custom shape tool, go over here. My last shape will be a bowling pin. And if I hold down the shift, I can make as many of these damn bowling pins as I want, and very easily give them a fill. Look at you. So now I do not have to do this again and again and again, because that bowling pin is mine. I can make an army of bowling pins in like 10 seconds. The only thing is, you see how I overlapped these? I definitely need to do that for the soldiers. Absolutely. I overlapped these. They are on one layer. So if I wanted to move these two, I can't really do that. All right. So I'm going to make a new layer, grab the vector tool with my bowling pin still selected, hold on the shift to constrain proportions. So it's making them all on one layer. That's, that's the only thing. If you want to make them as pixels. I like this. This has been very helpful, Amy. Thank you. You can also make them as pixels. Question. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a vector shape and creating them as pixels? Well, if you see as pixels, if I want to change these as vectors, all I have to do is double click on them and they all change. When they're vector shapes. When they're vectors. As okay. pixels, not so much. <laughs> okay. I would have to select them in a different way. So I would definitely go, especially since this project is uh, vector heavy, I would go with vector shapes. Now, if you make a ton here and you need, you're going to go home, it's this little sprocket here that's going to allow you to save your shapes. Um, if you want to even do it so you don't save all of them, go to the preset manager and then just select the last one and then you say Walter doing yoga and saying save set and then we'll call it, you know, we could do a whole bowling thing and then just save it to your desktop so that you can take it home and you don't have to spend any additional time doing that. So then question, mm -hmm. if you load, if you have a path you've created, you load path as selection, and then let's say you fill that selection on that layer, have you created a pixelized image, and that's why it's hard to go back and reselect the thing? This is, yeah, this is just pixels. Okay. So if you zoom in, 
You're gonna like the vector's gonna look pixelated too, but it's not. It's defined mathematically, like just Got like it. an illustrator. And then um, the pixels, however, you would have to go in and do an entirely different kind of selection um, of them, maybe using the magic wand and uh, non-contiguous. So if you selected this, or hold down the shift, and you can, oh, there you go, it selected all of them. How did you end up with the two different types, though? I saved it as a path. Let me show you. No, I, I saved it as a path, and I also saved it as a vector shape. And when you go to um, use the vector tools, custom shapes, it asks you, do you want pixels, a path, oh, okay. or a shape? Okay. And I want a shape. Okay. So you would have it be placed on a new layer instead of just instantly being placed onto the same one. I feel like there might be. Yeah, I think there, there really should be. There should be. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there you go. Oh, there we go. So went to the I layer. went here and made sure that this said new layer. And then every time I held down shift, you know what I think it is? It's that I'm holding down, start to drag it, hit shift, let go, start to drag it, hit shift, let go. So if you hit shift before you drag it. Right, if I just do this, it's combining uh, because it's seeing the shift as, oh, mom, you want me to combine those. Gotcha. Okay. What did you hit to do? I started drawing it, and then I hit shift to constrain proportions, and then I let it go. Start drawing it, hold down shift to constrain proportions, let it go, and it will make a new one. If you hold shift the entire time, it will make them all on one layer. So don't do that. Don't do it, <laughs> unless that's your jam. Okay? All right, so we'll keep going.